Centennial Tower, Duke, November 3 3 with Foxtrot, we're three mile final. Duke 3 3 with the Foxtrot, continue. Series 2 Alpha Mike, runway 35 right Alpha 16, clear for takeoff, fly straight out. Clear to go, 35 right Alpha 16, 12 Mike. 2 3 with the Foxtrot, runway 35 right, clear land. Data is Foxtrot, clear to land, 35 right. Take us uh, 5 6 Tango, make left close traffic change, runway 35 left. 35 left, 5 6 Tango. Mostly for me, the HUD is going to be very dim because I want to keep my eyes on the center line of the runway and my eyes focused in case I need to abort the takeoff, but I'm going to be focused on airspeed on the HUD and any airspeed markings like rotation speed. That way I'm not having to look down at my primary flight display, I can look through the HUD at the runway and should an obstacle like a vehicle or another aircraft or an animal come outside, I'm not continuously looking between the PFD and outside, PFD and outside, I'm through the HUD the whole time and I still get my airspeed information. Very similar to the takeoff mode, except I'm probably going to increase the brightness a little bit. Now I want to look at a little bit more detailed information. This will depend if I'm IFR or VFR, but I may, I'm going to care now about course information, heading. Maybe I was assigned runway heading on departure, or maybe I was assigned a turn. Because I can see heading information displayed on the HUD, I'm more situation aware without having to look down at the PFD. The same with airspeed. We know that a lot of accidents happen during the takeoff and landing phases of flight, especially with slow air speeds where people get into stall spin right after takeoff. Because I have airspeed information and pitch information available to me while I'm in the climb out, let's say it's a hot summer day here in Colorado, high density altitude. So now I can reference altitude, airspeed, vertical speed, all while looking outside for maybe obstacles or other traffic. 